All right, it's been about 24 hours and you can already see on the LA River soil plate how much fungus is already growing. All of that white wispy stuff, that's fungus. Each little white dot you see is fungus. Now over here, you can really see some of the bacteria that's growing. It has like a shiny like appearance. And uh, it's really interesting because this plate has canamycin on it. So these are uh, either resistant to canamycin or there's something else altogether. I think what I will probably do though is do a, a 10x or maybe even a 50x dilution. If you remember I used a full dilution for this plate and see if I can't get a little bit more spacing between the fungal colonies so that I can do a better job of, of isolating them away onto their own plates. And here's the grass that we got from the LA River. You can see the fungus is growing out of the bottom and the ends. This one's actually sprouted in the plate. And every one of them is showing some fungal growth. Now I got these all from the same piece of grass, so there's a good chance these are all the same species. But what I'll probably do is just go ahead and let it grow out and see if there's any, if there's more than one. If there is, then I can transfer each one of those away to their own plates. Okay, we'll do our first transfer now. And what I'm gonna do is take one of these toothpicks here and just take a little bit of the mycelium off of this plate and go ahead and put that on this plate. And then that will allow me to isolate this species away from everything else. I think these are all the same. They morphologically look very similar. But then that will, then we'll have our first endophyte fungi isolate from the LA River grass sample. So let's do that. So after just two days of taking a uh, isolating one of these colonies away from the grass, here is the results. You can see that it's growing pretty nice, pretty um, nice and isolated. There's a single growth, only one colony, and it's already starting to produce that same orangish pigment that it produced in the other plate. And um, so this is an example of what a nice, clean isolate will look like. All right, we're about a little over a week out from having gone out and collected those LA River samples. And I showed you guys how I started. We started off with a full dilution of the soil sample. And this is what it's grown out to. And each of those little black spots and all the different colors, that's all the different species of fungi that have gone together. And as I suspected, that's too high of a suspension because well, look at this. This is really difficult for me to try to get one species and transfer it to a new plate. Uh, kind of hard or probably impossible now at this point, unless I get a little bit lucky. And then let's take a look at the the uh, the grass that we cultured. Look at that, how it's producing that beautiful amber uh, pigment there. And uh, the colonies are starting to grow together. And uh, yeah, so I think I may have already showed you guys how we, how we isolated that. We took a sterile toothpick and we just took a little piece there, moved it to this plate. And now two days later, uh, look at this. Now we have an, our first isolate from the LA River grass, which is cool because now that we have this isolate, we can DNA barcode it. We can take some pictures of it. 
Um, we could study it a little bit further, see how it grows. What do the spores look like? Is it producing that pigment? It looks like it's gonna start producing it here. There's so many different things to learn by isolating them out. But one of the things that I wanted to go over from the last video was we created a, a, di a dilution from the soil, the original soil sample. So here I have on the left the full, the full soil sample and water, and then we diluted it quite a bit down by just taking a milliliter from the tube on the left and putting it into this one. So one milliliter to 40 milliliter dilution. And so when I plated that a couple of days ago, now we have some growths. And this is a great, this is a great plate to use as an example. And I've scratched the, the cover of it to to held by looking at it under a microscope and uh, but I wanted to show it to you because if you look closely you'll see lots of individual colonies growing and that's great because they're growing at a pace and they're separated out enough that we can take a toothpick and take a small sample from one of these and move it to a new plate which is what I'm going to do now but the question still remains is these are not far enough along for me to really tell morphologically if they're the same or not. And so I have kind of like two choices. I can take a toothpick and take as many of these growths as I can. I can find on this plate and move them to new plates. And so if you're looking at how many colonies are growing here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, 11, we're talking about maybe a dozen that I can see. There's probably more once I take this uh, get the reflection out of the way there's more or what I could do is maybe just pick some of them and plate some of them and let them grow which I, is probably what I what I will do and what I usually do another approach might be to take a take a new plate into let's say this is a new plate and just put three on this plate put three on another plate. And so if we think there's 12 colonies, then we need four plates that each have three on them. Then we can monitor those and see which one of those are unique and then move those to new plates. And so, yeah, that's a, either one would work. And it really depends on like how much work you wanna do. Cause I just think I've only taken a swath of a milliliter of this. If I repeat this one more time or a couple of more times, with this soil, maybe there's some fungi in here that I was not able to capture on this plate, which is probably a high likelihood. So this process might need to be repeated a couple of times. So yeah, I think what I'll do now is I'll set up the tripod and just show you uh, up close how I use a toothpick to transfer some of these to new plates. So if you saw what I did, I had to change. Uh, things always change in real time as you're doing them. So, you know, as I, I, as I began to go through here and, get, and take a better look at them, I found a lot of, there's a lot of similarities between these the more that I looked at them. So on some of them, it took me a little bit of time to decide which ones I wanted to pick to put over here. And um, it could be that I just didn't let this grow long enough. So. 
that way like I could see like or is it going to be a green mold is it going to be white is it an aspergillus is it a penicillin it's kind of hard to tell at this stage so there's always this like push and pull between you know like do you do you want to transfer early like transferring early means you have a lot more cleaner transfers because there's not as much competition and less of a chance that the toothpick will pick up something else but uh you run the risk of duplication you run the risk of you know separating out and isolating uh, the same species multiple times so those are some of the considerations when doing some bioprospecting so that is basically how we do isolation of cultures so i've got those isolated we'll let those grow out for maybe a week or so and i'll be posting updates on instagram and hopefully we get some cool stuff and see what it does as it grows out and uh, then we'll figure out of those that got isolated and grew, which ones do we want to go through the DNA barcoding process with? And uh, that's really, that's where we run into a lot of fun. We have a lot of fun. We do DNA extraction, we do uh, PCR, and we send them off for sequencing. And uh, maybe some of these we might uh, show you guys how to do full genome sequencing on some of these if there's something interesting that hasn't already been fully sequenced out there. All right, you guys, see you next time.